Hey everyone, Aja here from Pandemonium. For the past two months, I've been planning out my garden and it's been a long road. And with a little hard work, persistence, and help from friends, I got mostly everything that I wanted to plant planted out for this season. Now we have been getting some unusual cold temperatures that have been lingering, so things have been going a little slow. But I had promised you a garden tour, so I just wanted to give you an update and show you what was growing. Like I had mentioned before in a previous video, I do have a 20 acre parcel, but I only use an acre or two for my actual home base and where the garden is. I was able to direct sow some of my seeds. I did start some things early while I was traveling. My last frost date here on the property is around May 15th. And like I had mentioned earlier, I did get my seeds started and they were ready to be planted out by our last frost date. I live in the Flagstaff Williams area in a little town called Valley with the views of the San Francisco peaks and the mountain range in the distance that you see. I don't stay on my property by myself. I do have friends and guests that come and stay with me. Some people have permanent spots here and some people just come and visit. Now that was filmed May 15th of this year, which is 2023, and tomorrow will be four months. This is the view from my deck, and that is the San Francisco Peaks, and I believe that is Kendrick Mountain there. Then there's the Williams Mountains that go on over that way. In the aerial view, I showed you my vegetable garden. So we're going to start there. Here I have in this first row, we have horseradish growing there, which is an herb. There's two plants there. They're not very big. This is their first year. And this is its second year on the fig, Those both of those. This one is a Black Mission, and that's a Chicago. I did move these this year. So they're kind of stunted or not growing very good, but hopefully they'll catch back up in like a couple years, they'll be big. But I'm gonna winter protect them this year because I heard it's good to do because they do die back and it takes so long for them to jump back up. So I'm gonna try to protect them this fall or winter and see what happens. I've left spaces here for other plants. This is honeyberry. I've tried to grow blueberry on the property. It's just really hard. You have to amend the soil or either grow it in pots. So I decided to grow honeyberry because it's a lot like blueberry, um, but it tolerates higher pH soils is what we have here. And honeyberry, you can definitely grow in this kind of climate and soil conditions. Then back behind this salt bush here, which is huge, is... Uh, another fig tree. This one is a black mission as well. This one's doing better because of the fact that it hasn't been moved. So it's been in ground, but this is on its second year. So it's not huge. And I did not winter protect it, which I'm going to do this winter. I used to do my seed starting over here, but I've cleaned up that whole area because I'm not doing any more seed starting right now or this season. And I've put the spare windows over there that I'm going to eventually, I think, build a greenhouse with. I haven't decided. I definitely need to get more. And I've cleaned up and cut back this juniper, which eventually I think I'm going to get rid of. But right now it gives off a nice shade. But the only problem with these is that they're invasive and they also suck up a lot of moisture in the ground, which is not good for the garden. I do want to do a row here of fruit trees to eventually replace this. This is where I store my extra pots. It's just out of the way. We have mulched almost every surface in the garden here just to keep the moisture in the ground. And this is the most dramatic change here. I hear the girls. What are y'all doing? Over there are the compost bins. We moved them this year because they were by the fence and we noticed rodents were digging under the fence. So 
I wanted them out and away from the garden. What you doing, Momo? Speaking of rodents and rabbits, we did decide to put some chicken wire on the outside of the fence about three quarters of the way up and then come out about a foot and a half. And eventually we are gonna paint the entire pallet fence. Girls are just free ranging right now. I think that's Sookie and Phoenix. Hey girls, where's Nightshade? Oh, there she is. She's in the chicken run. And the girls are doing good. An update on them. We've got the automatic feeders, the automatic waterer. So they don't need a lot of attention. We just give them scraps and foods from the garden. And also if we have any dinner scraps. They are definitely very happy girls. I did have an automatic door, but it stopped working. So we purchased one that was more expensive and just looked like it wouldn't fail. The other one was cheaper, made from China and it didn't last, but I'd say three months and it stopped working. So we just opened it up and then left the door open. It's all enclosed, so rodents or anything can't get in there or predators. Like I said, they are very happy girls and they're laying eggs every day. Actually, one of them is laying twice a day because every once in a while I keep on getting four eggs it's not every day, but every once in a while I'll get four eggs and I don't have four hens. So one girl is laying two of them. I think it's actually Sookie. So back to the garden. Like I said, this is the most dramatic change here. And this is my second year on this garden here. So the soil is a little better. I've mulched and amended the soil. There's my dog, Mumu. <laughs> Are you wandering? Checking things out. So we have squash here. I believe this one is the straight neck yellow summer squash. And then there's cantaloupe back there, which I don't think is going to do much this year. It's already getting late into the season. I'm growing these sunflowers. They're the red variety. They're really beautiful. They're supposed to be like a dark red, like you see in the middle part there, but there's a lot of yellow in these, so, but I still like them. I'm going to save the seeds and try them again next year. This is the teddy bear. It doesn't look like much right now. And only one sprung up, but I'm going to save the seeds for that one and replant that next year. Got mint here. This is a sweet mint, chocolate mint, and we've got lemon balm and peppermint. More squash plants. This one is... Uh, oh, this one is a zucchini. And I think this one is zucchini as well. We've got a winter squash here growing. I grew this last season and they did really well, but I only won. Whoa, what are you running from? Girls are so crazy sometimes. Anyways, I might pull this one off. It doesn't look like it's doing that well. So that one's doing much better, but only one actually. Oh no, there's another one here, but I don't see any squash on it. Nope. Okay, well, moving along. Here's another zucchini. As you can see, I've already harvested plenty. And one more thing I wanted to note is that we fenced in the whole area because we were having rabbit and squirrel issues in here. And this fencing inside has helped. Plus we have been doing something. They were living under the shipping container and we've been addressing that issue. We're actually digging a trench and we are putting cement in and then burying the trench. That way they can't dig under. And it has been helping. We have, I haven't seen any rabbit or squirrel activity in a couple months. But let me flash back real quick and show you when we installed this fence and also when I harvested some squash. We're finishing off the fencing here. So rodents and rabbits and squirrels will stay out. But look what I saw in the garden. That's a nice size. I think that'll be for dinner tonight. Yum, yum. <laughs> okay, and we're gonna continue on from where we left at this squash plant, this the zucchini that I showed earlier. And these five trash cans are the beefsteak tomato, but they are determinant because they don't get too big. And there's a lot of, look at all the tomatoes on here. I need to, actually, I should have tried this, or I should have put a cage over this because it's so heavy. But luckily, they're resting on the rim of the trash cans. And I've got interplanted some basil. I'm actually going to harvest that 
and let it grow back. But I want to harvest it and I'm going to preserve and dry for the winter season when I'm traveling. As you can see, there are some that are starting to ripen up. I've already probably harvested about five tomatoes, not too many. So I'm excited because they're, it's just, it's really loaded down. If you could see, look at all those tomatoes. It's crazy. Okay. I don't want that to break. Down here I have my nasturtium growing and it's starting to spread. I had planted three here but only one plant did well and now it's starting to spread everywhere. It's a beautiful, well maybe there's more than, because I see this bright red and then there's this kind of mm, fuchsia corally kind of color. It's beautiful. This is the color that I wanted to grow so hopefully the seeds and I can collect the seeds for next year. This is planted along with the asparagus and my sunflower alley that i have here i planted all these here these are the mammoth sized sunflowers some are big some not so much but i'm still going to collect the seeds that way i won't have to buy seeds next year i did have some seeds i put them up in the loft in the lean-to in a basket which i shouldn't have done because a rodent made its nest in the winter time in that basket and it had all the harvest or all the seeds so there was sunflower seeds in there i think there was corn in there so yeah bad idea i definitely need to put things in bags and put them away for the season and then just get them next season but i'm not going to make that mistake again with the mammoth they're single stemmed with one flower these are the multi-stemmed i planted these last year and luckily i didn't have any seeds but these are volunteers and they're huge. Look how many flowers are on that one there. And this one, look the stock is getting huge. And this one's starting to come up with more flowers. But I'm going to save the seeds for this one because I do want to regrow these again next year. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is plant them behind my brassicas and lettuce. That way it'll shade those and it'll provide shade because these like the sun where the lettuce and the brassica don't so much not all day anyways not the heat here and so i'm gonna use these as dappled shape over my kale and cabbage and lettuce and that should help so right here is another volunteer this is a sunflower this thing is massive it's the biggest one the biggest volunteer that i have if you'll look in here and look at the stock it's just huge I mean, it's massive. So this whole thing just looks like it's doing well and it loves this spot. This is kind of what I want to create is do a sunflower because I can collect the seeds and save them for next year. And also I can put them in a bag and feed them to the girls, the chickens over winter. I'm not actually gonna be here for the winter, but my neighbors are, and they said they would take care of the girls, come over and check them every day. Uh, I do have a automatic feeder. It's the water that's gonna be an issue in the winter. They will, the water will want to freeze because it does get that cold here. So what they'll have to do is just bring over water daily, which they said they'll be happy to do. and. The girls are young, so this first year they should definitely lay eggs throughout the winter. It's all our first time that we've tried this, so all we can do is try and see what happens. My cucumber started slow. Everything actually grew very slow. And we did have a hot July. I don't know if that's what stunted everything. And I was gone the whole month of July. Everything was just on drip system. So we have the automatic watering system. And we changed our rainwater collection to this big tank over there and if you want to see that video i'll link it at the end after this is done but yeah everything got stunted although it's starting to grow now really well oh, look at that i already have harvested about three and here's another one right here uh, that's ready to be harvested uh, i guess i can get that after or maybe i can get it now let's see yeah i'll wait I don't want to rip it off with one hand. And back here I have rhubarb. These are my two plants from last year that were huge, but I transplanted them because I wanted them in this location. They do like a shadier location. So they kind of got a little stunted this year. They're not as big as they were last year. So hopefully by next year, they'll get more established and grow bigger. 
Hey, Mama Nanny. Like I said, a lot of things are stunted. The green beans are just finally starting to climb the trellis. And let's see. Oh, we've got a couple green beans on here. Huh. Actually, there's a several, but they're small. So hopefully we'll get a harvest. This is the middle garden bed, which has brassicas through here. I'll start on this side. This is an apple tree. It is on its second year. It's not as old as that one. We planted it the next season. And actually that one as well, which you can see what had happened with that is we didn't have all this fencing and in the winter, the rabbit actually grazed on the bark, which it did this one as well, but this one wasn't affected, thankfully. But that one was almost completely stripped. And as you can see, it died back. There's nothing left. I believe it's, yeah, it's pretty much dead. So there is something growing from the bottom, but I'm not sure what this rootstock is and if it was grafted. So I'm not sure what kind of tree I'll get from it, but I guess we can see, I'll let it grow. Okay, back on this side of the garden, I have French sorrel here, which is perennial. But getting it established, I tried last year, did not grow at all. I got it to grow this year because I started the seed in a pot. And then I planted it, but then something came and grazed before we got the fencing up. So it's been struggling. Yes, yeah, definitely a struggle. But I covered it up and been watering it. I think it requires a lot more water than that, but, and I might change the spot, who knows, or just plant it next year again and see if I can try. This is collard greens, and we have had a lot of grasshoppers, and also hail, so that's what some of these holes are from, is hail, unfortunately, but we have some nice leaves of collard green. These are good in stir fries. Then I planted carrots and uh what are what are the other things that i plant oh yeah um beets and other things that didn't do well in this first row up here so i ended up planting green beans and they're coming up now they're just the bush style beans and then i have broccoli here which is starting to go to seed i should cut that back because it'll regrow new shoots which I've done here, and it's growing little shoots, and you can harvest these and eat these. But, yeah, it's wanting to seed. There's more broccoli. We have kohlrabi here. I harvested one of those and gave it to Terry. She said she liked kohlrabi. I've never eaten it personally myself, but I'm gonna look up a recipe and see if I can find, because they're getting pretty sizable. I think this is what size you're supposed to harvest, and especially that one right there. This one here, I think, got way too big. So that might be woody, I'm not sure, but we can try, I don't know. Or maybe I'll just leave it and um, make something from the leaves. But we've got pepper plants here. These are the giant Marconis. They're just starting to flower. Hopefully we'll get some peppers before the cold sets in. Red cabbage here. And the one and only leek. I planted probably 10 leeks, and I think one or two survived, but this is the best one. More red cabbage there, which was stunted and didn't do well. These are jalapenos. Nothing there. And these, I think, are bell peppers, and they're already starting to flower. I don't know if there's... I don't think there's any bell peppers on there. Huh. No, there's one little one right there. And then I have strawberries over here. I had peppers here. These were the ones I overwintered. They did not survive. And I had planted a whole row of tomatoes here. This one is, I think the beefsteak. Let's see, which one is this one? Oh no, this is Stellar. And it's doing pretty well. Not the best, but it has tomatoes on it that need to ripen. And that was the only one that survived of that one. And then these ones were by seed. These are the, the yellow pear cherry tomatoes. They still need to size up a bit and ripen, but there are a lot of fruit on here already. And three of those out of, I think, six I planted survived. And interplanted in some spots is more basil, but this is the Thai basil, a different kind of spice. 
And I had planted tomatillos here, but they did not survive at all, which is weird because tomatillos naturally grow here. Like right here, I didn't even have to plant these. And look at, these are tomatillos. They just naturally grow here. I'm not sure if these are edible, I haven't checked. Oh, wait, here's some that are dried already. Oh. Oh. But anyways, they do grow here. This is my herb garden. I wanted all my herbs in one spot. And I'll go through the herbs that I planted. We've got chives here, parsley. And I seeded more parsley here. You can see it's starting to come up. And then next to that, we have the oregano. I had done a row of sugar snap peas along this trellis here, the tomato trellis, because I wanted it to kind of grow up this, but they did not do well. And I even had them on drip, so I don't know. I might try them again since we're getting into cooler weather and they might grow. So this is a broadleaf sage, garden sage. Green onions here, which I love to use all the time in my cooking. Then we have thyme over here, and here's another garden sage. This is a different leaf pattern though. We have rosemary here. This is my second time trying to grow rosemary. The kind I grew before wasn't cold hardy, so it did not come back. This is supposed to be cold hardy to negative 10. So hopefully this will come back year after year. Then here we have cilantro, which died off and it did go to seed. There's some seeds, I also planted seeds. So there's some cilantro coming up there and cilantro does like cooler weather. So hopefully that'll come up. I did a few climbing roses in the garden just for looks, but they didn't do well. I did get these ones when I was down in Phoenix. It might not be the right climate for those particular ones. And I did show you my strawberry patch. These are the ever bearing. I was gonna completely remove this lean to here, the small one that we used to keep wood under just because I haven't been using it for anything, but then found that it's a great place to store the larger tools like the lawnmower and also the auger and this cart, which is very useful. It's a perfect place to store that so it keeps it out of the rain mostly. Okay, back over here to this garden that I said we haven't really done much with yet and it is on its first year. What we did is I sheet mulched it with cardboard and then covered it with more mulch, just the wood chips and stuff. So I'm just letting this set. And with this one here, last year I had amended the soil, like I said earlier, and now I've got blueberries here which I'm hoping every blueberry that I put in the ground in the other garden just did not do well. I had to transfer them to pots. And I'm hoping I really, really amended and dug this hole deep. I'm hoping this will survive here. And this is my grape trellis with, of course, the understory of the blueberry and also more strawberries. So these are Thompson seedless grapes here. And there's three plants on this side with more strawberries. I'm hoping they will spread. They do have runners and they are starting to spread that way and in this way. So hopefully, eventually this will all be covered with strawberries. I've got these zucchinis here, which are massive, but they are an amended soil. They really like it. They're standing tall and they have a lot of flowers on them. Is there any, I can't see, but I'll check later. If there's any fruit there or veggies. Um, and here I'm doing raspberry. Next year I won't do this. Maybe one, but not two. I want to grow raspberries here up this trellis. And I'm going to do blackberries on this sector. And then there's another Thompson grape with summer squash. This is the yellow. This one definitely has fruit, but they're not ready yet. There's tons of them on there. Since I'm doing an update on the whole homestead, I guess I can show you everything. I've shown this before. This is the rainwater collection. This wood shed that used to be here. Now that I showed you, I use it for tools. And the rainwater goes into this bucket. This is the bucket that we use, or the tote, that we use for the shower. And we just use the rainwater that goes in here. And it lasts pretty much all season. We get enough rain. And I painted all this because we had burnt this wood, but I just felt like the burnt wood doesn't preserve as good as it says. Maybe I'm not doing it right, but I put a fresh coat of paint over all the bare wood. It just looks good. My ranch, my rules. 
And this is the outdoor bathroom with a composting toilet. And also here is the shower. And this shower is plumbed and it goes out to two of the apple trees out there. And that's what this feeds. So I want to show you what controls our outdoor shower. This is the hot water heater. It's an instant one. And it'll warm it about 20 degrees hotter than the ambient temperature. So it's 76 now and it will warm it up to obviously 96 or a little hotter just depending. And this is the thermostat. You can make it as hot or cold as you want. Turn it on with the power and then just press start. And, oh, oh, oh. Put the pump in. We keep this closed because we don't want bugs or anything to get in here. We had used a bucket before, but a rat had jumped in there and I was like, nope, no more. I don't want to use that. So now we use this and we keep it closed. This is the bucket system I'm talking about. And Jeff actually still likes to use the bucket. I use the barrel, not the bucket. As you can see, there's water in there. I don't like water being kept in there because the last time a rat had jumped in there and drowned, I just prefer not to do all that. Anyways, back to the bathroom. All right, let's try this again. Turn on the power and then you press start and it kicks on. There you go. Instant hot water. Oh, that's cold. Hold on. Takes a second to warm up. Oh, that feels better already. But yeah, and you can stand on your tippy toes and get a little view of everything out there. The mountains in the distance, the garden. It's nice to take a shower outside. Always a great option. And awesome that it works off of rainwater. I'll show you more about this in a minute, but this is the power in the laundry room and the shower does require some power. So it's plugged into the inverter here and that's what powers it. It does have its own batteries, but you have to charge those batteries. So every once in a while, we just cut that on to top off the batteries in the unit. This is the back of the unit. This is where the water comes in. The small battery is in here that needs to be charged every once in a while. And then this is a small propane tank, which is refillable. How many showers do you get before you have to fill well, the propane? A long time. That's, that's one canister's lasted all this summer so far. Oh, really? I thought it only did like five or six showers. Yeah. Well, that's, that's if you're warming the water from cold water, you know, coming out of the tank. Oh. But, if, but if you either use the barrel or uh -huh. use the water that's in a hose, fill it in a pail, it's starting off at 80-some degrees. Oh, okay. Hey, pups. Another thing that we change in the outdoor is that we put concrete here because a lot of rodents and rabbits were getting underneath here. This was their access point. So we closed all of this in with concrete. They cannot dig under there anymore or get under the shipping container this way. We used this kind of bamboo reed stuff that you get from Home Depot as the walls. I eventually do want to change this out. It was nice for two seasons, but it's starting to age. You can definitely tell it. And I just want to replace it probably with a corrugated that I have on the outside because it's weatherproof and it'll last for 10 years or more. Then I put in just little knickknacks and decorations and I have a mirror here. Of course, when you get out of the shower, you want to see yourself. Hello. <laughs> or maybe not. Another mirror. Ha! Ah, so many mirrors. The solar panel against this wall here is for the laundry room. Now we are going to add more solar panels at a later time. But right now this 200 watt one is working and the battery is usually at 100%. Okay, well this is the vegetable garden area. And let me take you out to the center court. So through this archway here, which I wish was fuller with more veggies, but maybe next year they'll do better. This is the first year I've tried here and I did run the drip system. So this is the utility laundry room and we just installed this sector. This is for the pump for the rainwater system. We have a solar panel. Well, this is the charge controller, the inverter, the lithium battery that used to be in Panda and then the pump here. And if you want to go back in the videos, I show where we install all this and everything is complete now. We do have one cable here that we have to tee into the line here. We'll do that probably today sometime, but this runs this here. And this is the sink. I want the sink to be working. I need 
to clean the sink out, clean this whole area. But this is the laundry facility. And this is where we wash clothes. And I'll show you where the water goes. But I want this sink to be working. And it's just to wash hands, wash fruit, whatever. I just want it to be working. And there'll be a bucket under here. It's going to be very simple. Or, I don't know, I might actually tee it in to where it can go into the buckets out there. But for right now, I'm just going to put a bucket underneath. And then we can just dump that bucket onto a bush or a plant or whatever. We do use all biodegradable soaps. Even the laundry detergent is biodegradable. And this is just storage shelves here with nails and screws and laundry detergent. And I do have bleach out there. No, we do not put that in our system and our gray water system. The bleach uh, was used to clean some of the barrels out and we went to a car wash for that. And that's the only thing that I use the bleach for. I normally don't like using bleach since it's such a hard chemical. I don't want it into my ground here. And more storage on this top shelf here, the chainsaw and also the bush trimmer. <laughs> that sounded funny. Um, the hedge trimmer, thank you. The extra gas is up here and more garden supplies and other stuff. And we keep some garden tools in here. And also, this is where the hose reel is. This thing is handy, love it, because it reels up the hose. I don't have to mess with it. This is the corrugated stuff that I say I want to put on the inside of the shower. It just, it lasts longer, it's more durable. And on this side of the lean-to is where all the garden tools are that we use daily. I do have a gate here, so this closes at night, so critters can't come in here. And then here is center court. Let's see, where should we start? Maybe a panda? Oh no, I changed my mind. I forgot to talk about this system over here, so let's go ahead and talk about this. This is our new rainwater catchment tote. We had used the smaller 275 totes, which were these ones over here, but I bleached those out. That's what I bought the bleach for. And we took them to the car wash, sprayed them out, and this now we use for transporting the water. These are food grade, and they just go on the back of the trailer. And we go to town, get some water, and bring them back to fill up just this tank. Now, I have another water carrier right there, and that one is used for our drinking water. Because nothing has ever been in that tank. It's a clean tank. No rainwater has ever been in it. So... I trust that water. I don't really use it for drinking, but I do use it for cooking and cleaning inside, showers, if I do that inside. So I guess I could use the rainwater. Well, I do use it for brushing my teeth as well. So I kind of want that water to be nice and fresh from the city, and that's what that is. And since we've separated that system, this tank lasts us a lot longer, the whole season, while we're here, and I don't have to worry about filling it up. We just get it full during the beginning of the season, and then it's good to go. But yes, rainwater, and this was just added as well. These four tanks here are the gray water for the washing machine. I decided that we needed four tanks here. They just hold more, so it has about a 200 or over 200 gallon capacity. And then what I usually do is I'll put it through the filter here. I've got a three stage, well actually it's probably a five stage filter because this has three stages in it itself. Then there's a sand and pebble filter here, and this is just charcoal. It removes the stinky smell. But anyways, I usually filter my gray water through that. Most people say you don't have to, but I like to remove the salts if I'm gonna use it on plants. So that way it doesn't hurt the plants. And then right next to that is my compost tea fertilizer. If y'all don't know what compost tea is, you can always Google it and see what it is. It's just basically like compost goes in there. You put like I would say a couple cups of compost and also leaf matter and stuff in there. You just let it break down in water, usually rainwater. And then it becomes a fertilizer that you can use on your plants. Obviously it works because the plants are loving it. Just so I'm clear about it, this tank here is specifically to fill the RVs. And this rainwater tank here is specifically for watering the gardens, the laundry room, and if we need to fill the barrel for the shower. And which is connected to all the hoses, just in case we need to rinse anything off or wash anything. This hose here is specifically for the drinking water or the RV tank. 
And since we're right here by my old ring, which was called Panda, and it used to be black and white, but since we, it got retired here, I painted it these three colors, the white, red, and gray, just for a different look. Right now I use it basically for a guest house and also for extra storage. I guess we're gonna start over at this garden bed. I had planted a lot of plants last season and they just didn't make it. So this season I've been focusing on native plants, letting the native plants take over like the salt bush because they grow so well and they don't need any maintenance or drought tolerant plants like the daisy here. I had to protect it, something was trying to eat it. It's got one flower on it. But once that gets established, it doesn't need much maintenance or care. And so that's what I've been really trying to focus on. Other than this sector here, this was Terry's sector when she was here, but they're gone to Phoenix. And I planted a watermelon there. It's stunted. And then we also planted her some squash plants over here. And that is actually a hydrangea that made it from last year, the only one that did. And this is the lettuce. This is the arugula that reseeded itself from last year and just growing in a patch. So I did add, add water into here so it gets watered. That is Terry's lettuce bowl thing that she's growing. So I put that on drip for her. And there's some thyme here, English thyme. It's just starting to get developed. It's so small and tiny. We've got a patch of sage there. And I planted this kiwi vine. I think I'd showed it once before, but this is the male and female. So that way it'll produce more. And my hope is that it will take over this whole kind of arbor area here. Hey, Moo. And just fill in and there'll just be baby kiwis or little, they're little tiny kiwis. They kind of remind me of grapes, the cold hardy version. So it is starting to get some new leaf growth. As you can see, all these lighter green leaves are newer growth. So I'm excited about that. I'm just going to keep on training it. But like I said, it is a hardy variety. So it should come back year after year, fingers crossed. We have some cucumbers here that are getting a slow start, but hopefully they'll catch up to the other ones. And pence them in here. Like I said, I'm trying to do the drought tolerant plants that don't need much attention. Mama, what you doing? We laid all this gravel last season and I planted a patch of mint here. And this does come back year after year. It's getting ready to flower. I see the little flowers. So that would be nice. But yeah, we planted this or I planted this last season when I used to be parked here, but now I'm parked over there. I just like to change it up a bit. And this used to be my sitting area, but I let Terry and Scott use this now. Um, there's some valerian there, which is drought tolerant once established, and it is perennial. I've got this climbing rose. This is the only one that survived from the roses that I bought in Phoenix, and it seems to be doing well. It likes that spot. And then we've got some red hot pokers here. And some cherry tomatoes I planted for Terry in this little pot here. It's the same variety as the ones back there, the yellow pear. And we have the amaranth here, which grows naturally. I don't even have to plant that. And here we have some beer tongue. That is a penstemon and it is also drought tolerant. And this, some of my friends call the fish bowl. The sitting area that I created last season with the gravel and the sitting area with the umbrella. It's actually a very nice place to relax the later part of the day when it's shaded. And also you can put the umbrella up. We're going to move on. This is four o'clock, which grows naturally here. This one looks kind of shabby. Probably needs to be cut back and then it'll flush back with new growth and it gets beautiful purple flowers on it, but this grows naturally. Then we have the Rose of Sharon here, three of them. I retransplanted this one here, so that's why it's kind of stunted and not doing as well. And it's uh, also the Daylily here, so it's got to get reestablished. I have two more Daylilies here, a Mugo Pine there, and then more natural salt bushes. Wow, this is going to be a very long tour. 
So we have the Rocky Mountain Penstemon, which are native plants here. The Globe Mallow, I did not have to plant. This gets beautiful orange flowers on it. And this grows naturally and actually is kind of invasive and spreads through rhizomes, which I'm fine. You know, I'd rather have plants here than a bare desert floor with nothing but dust. And here we have some irises and more daisies. I had to cover these though. Something came, I think it was a rabbit, and completely ate it back all the way down, which is fine. I guess it helps to get the plant established, but I went ahead and covered them so they could grow some greens. This here is the Mexican primrose. I planted this last season and it didn't do too well, I believe, because I planted it in a shady spot. It does like moisture, so I do have it on drip, but once it's established, I, I think it is drought tolerant and it will spread through rhizomes, underground roots. Underneath this salt bush, I need to trim this back or move it, is my little gnome village. <laughs> you can't see it. Gnome village with mushrooms and another salt bush. This one has gotten so heavy and got because it, it has the, these like seed things, I believe that's what these are. The center looks a bit empty there because everything's weighed down. I probably need to trim it. I have hedged up a lot of these bushes and probably need to do that to this one. So that way all this will spring back up. It's really gotten huge. This thing was probably that small when I first moved here. Now it's like huge. Definitely loves the spot and the mulch. I have mulched all the garden beds. This is a True Gratitude Rose by True Blooms. It is beautiful and it's done so well. And it has a lot of blooms on it. I need to deadhead some of the flowers here. But this is its second flush of the season. Crimson Pygmy Barberry here. Bridal Memories Lilac. Purple Leaf Plum Tree. Continuing on, I planted this this season. This is the Electric Love Wygela. And then over here, which is never done really that well, is the Dwarf Burning Bush. Right next to that is the Blue Russian Sage. And then we have a Chicago Hardy Fig Tree here, which is doing pretty well. And like my other ones, I'm going to winter protect it. I didn't do that last season. This was the main stock and it died off. And the understory here is Comfrey that I planted, which is doing really well. I need to cut back some of that leaf and put it in my compost tea. And then we have the same lilac over here, the Bridal Memories. I had bought these trees here and more across the way. They were $15 a piece on sale, but they had lost all their leaves. I thought they just were going through shock, but that wasn't the case. They died off. So these are total fails, these apple trees here. I'm going to have to replace those, but probably not till next season. And then this is a three fruit tree. There's stone crops. And this is cherry, nectarine, and peach is what this is. And this is where I park my rig now. I have a little seating area over there, a table. And it's really nice here because I get the view over there, which is beautiful this time of day. Well, actually all the time. And I have this little sitting area here, which is nice. I feel like it's going to rain on us. So I better get this tour done quickly. I just felt a drop. This is a sitting area here. That's why I kind of parked here since it was so close to these sitting areas. This is the hammock area that we created last season, which is wonderful. The only thing I want to do is probably paint all the posts white. We had burnt them and some of them are treated posts, but the ones that weren't treated, we did burn. But I just still think it would be better to have some paint on it. It would fare better in the weather. I know I'd, I'll have to repaint it every couple of years, but I think it will look better painted. So that's what I'm gonna do. And got a black lace elderberry right here. Not much is planted in this garden. I just mulched it really heavily and I'm seeing what natural plants are coming in. We've got a cactus, actually I transplanted that. And then there's another cactus over here. This one is the prickly pear. And I might actually move those 
and put them over into this garden here, which is a natural garden. I haven't done anything to it but mulched it, and I'm just letting the natural plants take over. Right over here, we have another seeding area. And I do have some succulents in this pot here because they are not on drip system. So I wanted something that didn't need water a lot. We have another black lace elderberry. I planted three roses, actually four roses. There's one over there and three over here. And those were part of the roses I got when I was in Phoenix and they did not survive. I had to cover this poor bell because it had gotten eaten by rabbits or something, squirrels. So it's just now starting to bounce back. So she will stay covered. Actually, most of my car bells are covered. Here's more of the four o'clock. As you can see, it gets pretty big and spreads out. And once it gets the purple flowers all over it, it's absolutely beautiful. So like I said, I'm trying to go more towards natural plants and just let whatever will grow, grow and take over and just see how it does. I'd rather have plant growth in here than nothing at all. Now I did plant these. These are the little yellow flower. They're the early sunshine and they are tick seed. These are drought tolerant once they get established and beautiful. They get, I think about 12 to 18 inches tall and they are very Beautiful. I think this will be a pretty patch over here if it takes hold. And I forget what this vine is, but it has small little purple flowers on it. But it's a great ground cover and it doesn't need a lot of water. It just kind of takes over, as you can see. It likes this spot. There's just so much to talk about. I don't know if I can squeeze it all in a video. But anyways, these are the jujubes. I have two of these that I planted. One is here and one is over there. I'll show you that in a minute. And then along the fence line here, I had a climbing rose there, but it did not survive. So I'm gonna plant a blackberry like I have done along here. And that's what I was saying was along the fence line is the blackberries. And these are the thornless variety. I have one, two, and there's another one of the apple trees that I got with that grouping that obviously did not survive. And that was, four, five. So I have five. And these are the blackberries, the thornless. This is the other jujube right here. And then I have some gara planted here, which is drought tolerant once it gets established and should come back year after year. And I actually found this on the roadside. There is this penstemon growing and it's the Rocky Mountain. I paid five dollars last year for them. But this one I found along the roadside and there was lots of them. So I dug up one of the plants and it came with this baby mullen, which must be on its second year because this is a biennial and it is flowering. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? It's it little yellow flowers. But that should reseed and spread through the garden, which will be fine. Kind of reminds me of lamb's ear. And here is... I think this is a raspberry. I don't think this is a blackberry. That's why I didn't include it in the count on the blackberries. This one, I believe, is a short variety or a bush variety of raspberries. This is a shipping container that I use for storage. It stores a lot of my things in the winter, like the sofa set and just a lot of stuff. We just cram in there and then lock it up because it's pretty secure. There is another raspberry and I planted the lavender here along with the dianthus. This is the globe mallow. You can barely see the dianthus down there. And then the pin cushion. Whoa, the wind's coming in. And some globe mallow that is spreading through here along with the pin cushion flower. And there is a clematis there. It's actually a really beautiful clematis. And this is its first year. I planted it this year. So it's going to need a couple years to take hold, but it has a huge, beautiful white flower. And there was a climbing rose there. I wanted to go along here and climb, but it did not survive, unfortunately. So through here, we have mostly native plants and we have the Gara, which I planted, but it is native and also the Veronica, which is native. And um, this I did not plant. I did transplant it from out there. It was growing out in my drive and I didn't want anybody to run over it. So I transplanted it here. A lot of this is coming up. It's like from seed. I don't know what it is. I did throw a bunch. I just throw seeds around randomly and see what comes up. Sometimes things work and sometimes they don't. This is more Veronica, but it's the pink variety. The other one I showed you over there is purple. 
Marhukara or Corabelle. And this is the Christmas Rose. I believe that's what it's called. I can't, I can't, the name slips my mind right now. More Corabelles or Hookara. You have a hosta back there. And I was thinking about moving this because it's leafing out and it's spreading and it's getting big and beautiful. But the problem is, as you can see, there's no flowers. This is yarrow and it's the red variety. But since it's in shade, I don't think it's going to flower. Oh, here's a little bit of flower right here. But that's what it looks like and hardly anything on there. So anyways, I might move this to a different location that is also drought tolerant. And I did plant some buddleia, which is drought tolerant as well, or butterfly bush. There's one, two, three, four, five. That one, they are struggling. The other four, like these two here, are doing well. More native plants that I've talked about before. And I have sedum planted there, which doesn't need a lot of attention. Although, for some reason, rabbits or squirrels had eaten it back to nothing. There was nothing left of it. More yarrow planted here. Where Mumu is sitting is the little fire pit area. And this is all the wood. My birthday's getting ready to come up, so Ed was nice enough to cut up some wood. I'll see if I find a clip of that and show it. But we do need to kind of clean up the area and also do something with all this smaller wood. Here is the bar area that I've shown before, which is great when we have meetups or little gatherings. This is our extra fire pits if we have a larger group. And this is propane, which we don't really use here. This is mainly fire, since we can get firewood. And there's just so much. I'm just overwhelmed of what to talk about. I'm just going to show you more. This is the seating area here. And I've shown you the deck with another seating area. And the wind is starting to pick up. I think the storm is coming in. We might have to delay the rest of this tour. But I just want to show you the back area of the bar, which I have not done anything to really, other than put a few bar stools and store some chairs, extra chairs. But yeah, I do want to get something in here and make it more of a sitting room for guests when they come. So this is kind of just the view of it and what we've done so far here on the homestead. We're back to Panda. And this is a Granny Smith apple, which is doing well. I planted this last year and it's taking hold. I've got some native plants plant in here. This is flax, red hot pokers. This is the Mexican hat flower, which I love. There's a red variety too. This is the yellow. And I have another fig tree here, which is doing well. These are the other three apples, the last ones that were in that batch. I think I got, I don't know, like eight, eight trees that did not do well, but I should have known better. And I only paid 15 bucks from, but you know, it is what it is. You live and you learn. I'm going to replace these trees, but the understory here is the daisies, the red heart pokers. And I think this was planted by seeds. If I'm not mistaken, this is marigold. We got some comfrey here, more daisies. And this is Portatilla, and it is a drought tolerant bush. Once it gets established, it gets a good size, I think about three to four foot. And it has beautiful white flowers. Some of these, I think I have one in the garden, has the yellow flowers, which is pretty. Back there, I'm just letting some native plants take a hold. Oh, this is all through here. This is the mustard that's growing that seeded from last year, because I used to have the buckets in here and I tr uh, moved them all into the garden. But if you look around, here's a huge patch of it, of the mustard. It's just growing everywhere. The seed just dropped and grew from last year. It's amazing. I hope it does it every year. That would be awesome. So just more native plants. I think this is the last bed here that I really want to show. And I did plant more tick seed right here. And this is... God, I can't remember what this is, but I planted it by seed. I think it might be Dianthus or something like that. Red hot poker. This here is a willow tree and is supposed to be drought tolerant once established. We'll see how that goes. A friend of mine gave me that, so I'm glad to have that. 
Got some yarrow. Everybody knows that's, well, I'm sure most people know that's medicinal. It is an herb. Um, I've never used it that way. The only plant that I've really used medicinally is the nasturtium. I made a tincture out of it last season, but I do want to do more preserving and make more tinctures and stuff like that from these plants. Another portentilla, and this is another stone crop. This is only a peach though. There's two varieties of peach on here, an early season and a late season one. Two in one peaches. Wow, that storm is coming in. All right, well, that does conclude the tour here. If you have any questions, just leave them down below and maybe I can do another tour if y'all enjoyed this one. And, oh, there's a little bird. Hey, Tweety Tweety. Momo, look at it. Mother Nature is not playing. Look how red those clouds look. But the sun is setting, which is beautiful. It's kind of scary looking too. I want to thank y'all for hanging out with me during this video. I know it was a long one, but I had a lot to show, and I still don't think I showed everything that I could have. Good night, girls. Good night. Why are you in there? Are you being broody? But don't forget, if you want to check out more videos, they'll be over here. If you want to subscribe or check out Patreon, it'll be right over there. We'll hopefully see you next time. Until then, stay safe, onward bound, and happy homesteading. Bye for now. Oh. Mumu, say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> you were gonna wave there.